Now, taking a little bit of extra time, the day is extremely amazing. I, I, I am in awe. I'm humbled. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful for every one of you who stand with us this ministry, a small group, a handful. This, you know, this ministry financially is a miracle. It's a handful of people. If I would tell you how many people send money to this ministry every month, and it, it carries, carries the budget, you know, once in a while we fall a little short, but it's, it's a handful of people. It's literally a handful of people. It's a disgrace. It's horrible. It's so sad for people to have the opportunity to be a part of this ministry, which is doing the greatest work for God through the Spirit right now to prepare the people, the remnant, to get the church ready that are hungry for the fire of God is on its way in. Of course, hardly anybody would believe it until it gets here. Now, now, I want to say something here about agape love in the ministry. This might sting a little bit, but we'll put some ointment on it tomorrow. The Lord wants me to do it. You know what? I always say what he says. Always. Because then I can sleep peacefully tonight. And I do sleep peacefully every night. You see, we have this thing we call love. We have social get-togethers. We have barbecue times or whatever. And we have church times. We have everybody tell them how much we love them. The love of God is not in your soul. If it was, everybody would show it to one another and the world. The love of God is in your spirit. It's called agape. It's divine love. It's the love of God. It's a spiritual love. It could not live in your soul because it's a spiritual reality. It's a spiritual power, a spiritual thing. The love of God only rises up and really come to power when there's a crisis. Just like the, the compassion of the Lord rises up when there's a crisis. If you have a God pain in your spirit and you're walking with the Lord and you come into a situation of pain or, 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 or trouble that rises, that agape love rises up in you and starts pouring itself out to, to the people in the situation. But you know, the church knows nothing about agape. I challenge any pastor from anywhere in the face of the earth to come and tell me that your church knows anything about agape. Unless you teach them how to walk with the Spirit of God and develop their spirit, they don't know nothing about agape. It's like every church and every Christian on the face of the world, except for some remnant of you watching me with our ministry, you're walking with the Lord, you're walking with God, you're walking in the Spirit. Zero. So when our leaders get wounded, what do we do? We kill, our, we kill the wounded, right? When you look at the ministry, any ministry, it is supernatural inside the spirit of that person, male or female. On the outside, you're still Jimmy Joe. You're still born with flaws, shortcomings, weaknesses. This, this, this stupid religious thing sometimes. Oh, he's a pastor, you know. He, he, he'll never make a mistake. He, he, he'll never fail. He never, are you stupid? The ministry of the Lord gives you a flow from your spirit of ministry to people. It doesn't change your head. doesn't give you a holy head and a holy body. You still have the same body, same mind, uh, the same things, whatever came through your family uh, line and characteristics. You are still the same old ugly self on the outside. And you're fallible. It's amazing, you know, people in church, they suddenly go to the pastor, pastor pray for them, forgive them, everything's fine. But a man of God, a woman of God sins, let's kill him. Let's kill him. And actually, let me tell you how it's done here in America. I hope somebody, if you will go talk to some of those large ministries, because they're not listening to me, and they need to hear this. When you have a large ministry, and you fall, I can call names of television ministries. Every other large ministry that think they can benefit from an association, they call them up, they send a Learjet, they send a limo, they bring them in, they restore them. Are you listening to me? If their ministry is large, no matter what it is, 
I've seen one time a minister there in Texas going through this terrible divorce. And they're just flying him in. Learjet, everything helped him. Oh my God. Which is great. Praise God. But when, when I went through my divorce, people said, well, wait a minute now. Um, you know, his ministry is not as big as it was in the revival days. You know, we can do without him. And I began to learn what isolation and rejection is in the fivefold ministry. I was shocked. Remember, my ministry was my life. It was my income. It was my bread. Their pastors I preached for helped turn their churches around by Holy Ghost. Never heard from them. No one day. Their pastors in this country have large ministries. I helped them, some of them. Some of them ministered to, some of them I ministered for. Not a single one ever picked up a phone and said, Gabriel, how can we help you? Gabriel Hamans is not perfect. Neither are you. Not a one phone call ever of anybody says, Brother, can you pay your bills this month? Because I know you've been cut off. I mean, the, the phones, pastors, I used to preach, or just change the phone numbers. You can call the church office and leave a message. I did that a few times and realized I have been excommunicated. Let me tell you something. So God sent the ravens. God sent the ravens to feed me. And then from the time my wife and I got married, we're in the desert eating raven food. There's a small nucleus of people that understand the love of God. They understand what this ministry is about. They understood what it means to be spiritual, and they stuck with me. I wish I could see. I saw it one time. Oh, my God. I wish I could show to you, those of you that stayed with me and carried me and shouted. Wish I could show to you the crown Jesus will give you when you get up there. Just for that. A special crown. Just for that. Anybody who's ever helped and assisted this ministry will have eternal rewards that are great. Now listen to me carefully. It's not about Gabriel Haymans. God called me before time by his calling, by his will, by his spirit, by his anointing to be a leading Apostle of the Anton Church preparing the church for the last day outpouring, we call it the Golden Lord Rivers, the last day revival to bring in the harvest. To stand with this ministry and to support this ministry is the greatest opportunity to lay up eternal treasures for yourself, absolutely unequal to anything else because of the importance of this call, not Gabriel Hamans, the importance of this ministry. And this call. And what it is bringing to the church in this critical hour before the outpouring begins. This critical hour. I cannot thank you enough. Every one of you stayed with us these years. New people that have come and discovered. Not Gabriel Haymans or Shelley Haymans. But the awesome ministry of Jesus that he's placed in us by his spirit. And that he manifests by his spirit. 2017, the Lord spoke to my wife first and said, It's time to sit down and write the handbook for the end time exploits of God. Write the handbook. The golden glory. It took us three years to get it all done, put together. There are things in here that have never been written. There are things in here that have never been preached in the pulpit. There are things in here the church never heard of. Apostolic truth lost since the days of the Apostle Paul. Brought back to the church. You think we sell these by the thousands. But it's going to take a new generation. Only the remnant. Only the remnant from this last generation. That have the hunger. The passion. The fire. That seeks. That talk to the Lord. That listen. That hear. That receive the broadcast. Receive this ministry. This ministry is the only ministry I know on the face of the earth. That is bringing the most critical preparatory apostolic and prophetic ministry to the church. Making it available. So, why am I not invited, invited to churches anymore? Because I always obey God. And in 2017, from then into 2018, 
the Lord did not only reveal to us things for the church, but he exposed the whole system of church. Right in this book, True Christianity. He took me behind the scenes and he ripped the whole system apart. How the Antichrist spirit came in around about the year 90, took over the church, slowly, gently, worked his way into it. And he still got the veil on the church today. And we are sent from the Lord to bring the apostolic truth, prophetic truth, to help people. Get rid of the battle. So many of you watching us, your lives have changed. Not because of Gabriel Havens, because of the ministry of Jesus Christ by the Holy Ghost. Because I will not let a word come through my mouth that's not of the Holy Spirit. I will not teach anything. I don't care what they teach. I have, since I came to America, since, since, since 1979, they all try to find Jesus. I'm preaching the Holy Spirit to the church. They all try and work themselves to death with their faith. And I say, go in friendship, go walk with the Holy Spirit and He'll serve you. Jesus said He'll serve you in relationship. The church says, the hell with that. We don't want relationship. We just want handouts. That's why we came to all your revival meetings. For you to lay hands on us. Now we can drink the Holy Spirit and get drunk and be happy. But now since the revival is over, that's it. We wait for the next handout. Now here's one more thing. Sounds like a lumber now, sorry. Here's one more thing. Nobody has ever taught the church, not just in America, the whole church, sins or anything about the fear of the Lord. I've talked about this somewhat before, but I don't want to talk about it much. The Lord said to me, today you can talk about all of this. I said, okay, fine. He said, I'm, I'm talking through you. We're talking together. I said, okay, okay. God help any person that has ever come against this ministry, attacked it and cursed it. For you will not see the next revival. The fire judgment will take you out. Can you, can you believe, can you believe I heard this as a fact and a truth from a, from a well-known minister in the country that I knew too after I went through my divorce. This pastor called him and said, you know, when Gabriel was here, had the most amazing, amazing revival. Should I have him back? No. When you say to another minister, because the man has gone through a divorce, not to have him back. They're not discrediting me. They're attacking Jesus directly. They're refusing his ministry to come back to this vessel. So the church isolated me. They shut me down. Pushed me in the corner and rejected me. And the spirit of Saul was happy. Because they thought they killed David. But David's alive. Let me tell you something today. They isolated us. They rejected us. The pain, the hurt, the hell we went through, my wife and I. It's indescribable what we've gone through these years. To this day, some of those pastors around the country. Oh, I mean, they're their best friend. Till this day, not one of them have picked up a phone call and say, Gabriel, how are you? Not from the time I was in crisis. They know. They knew I got no money coming in, except for a few people. They, my ministry is stripped from me. My life is stripped from me. Nobody ever offered any help, except a few people in this ministry. Nobody. And then to say, do not have him back in your church. When the Lord knocked Saul of his horse, he didn't say, I'm here to talk to you about people you're fighting. Jesus takes any attack on his ministry very personal.
My wife and I can write a book on rejection, pain, the suffering, financial difficulty, hardship that we've come through, especially those first few years. You, you just feel like a curse of the earth. Agape? Love? Love? Love. Would you show me agape? Love? But I'll teach them. No, no, it's not a teaching. It's a demonstration. But there's one thing about driving a man, a woman, a God into the desert, as the church did with us. Now, all this going to change. In the next few months, we're going to get out on the road. The fire of idols can stop. It's already, it's already, it's already happening. No, tell me about it. Tell me everything. We'll, we'll be next two, three months. We'll be on the road. The fire of God's going to fall. The revival will start. Everybody want to come there, and all the pastors want me to come preach for them. It's amazing when I first came to the Lord said to me, anybody who invites you, just go. Now in this new revival, it says, anybody who invites you, you don't go. You go nowhere. Even if it's a 10,000 seater, you don't go anywhere unless I personally speak to you and say, go and I'll give you the date. And you give the pastor the date. And if that doesn't work, then you don't go. Because after the judgment of fire, a lot are going to change. A lot of them won't be out there anymore. They'll be judged because they've touched the holy. You've touched the holy things of God. People, you can say, personally, about Gabriel Hamilton, maybe you can't. You cannot come against this ministry. You cannot disrespect this ministry. You not attack this ministry. You gamble with your life because it's the ministry of Jesus and it must come forth in this hour. And if you are opposing it, if you part of a Opposing that and standing away with it, you're standing directly in the path of God, and He's going to mow you down. Don't care if you are apostle, prophet, bishop, whatever you call yourself. You better get your ass out of the way, because God's going to mow you down. Yes, I did say that word. Now, if anybody would say that, I said, now, well, remember what I said. This is, this is deeply, 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 deeply serious. I'm going to close with this. Be very careful when you drive a man or a woman of God into the desert. You cut them off. You cut off their supplies. You put them in the desert. Be careful. Because they're going to come out of that desert sometime. And when they do, just like Elijah did, supernaturally outrunning the horses. Of King Ahab. Now John the Baptist. He started to come out of the desert. He came. With a powerful ministry. Of preparing the way for Jesus. Now Jesus himself. After 40 days. He came out of the desert. Stepped into the power and the glory of God. Started his ministry. Saul of Damascus. Was taken into the desert by Jesus. Where he taught him the gospel. When he came out of the desert, God exploded through that ministry. Let me tell you something right now. 40 years. For 40 years. First of all, in a big oasis and revival, then the drought. But for 40 years, this ministry and myself have come through the desert. Yesterday was the last day of 40 years. The 40-year cycle is up. The 40-year season is over. I'm coming out of the desert. My wife's coming. This whole ministry is coming out of the desert. We're coming out of the desert. And we are going to see. We are going to see God shaking this country this year. Like you never believe. Even can't try to believe. From 2017 until now, I've seen more revelation. I've seen 90% of the revelation God's ever given me from 17 till now. And I've been full-time since 83. And I part-time preach 
since 79 after I met the Lord. The glory of the Lord is before us. Hallelujah. I'm going to read you a verse and I'm going to close. Hallelujah. Today is a day of great celebration. We want to again thank, I want to thank everybody who wrote, sent emails, both for my birthday last week and for this celebration. It's amazing, isn't it? amazing how this came, came together. Emails, texts, everything. Some of you sent offerings and blessings. Thank you so incredibly much. I cannot thank you and have not the ability to thank every one of you support this ministry. But God has a special way in which he will reward you because you stood was the ministry of Jesus vital to the church, an apostolic prophetic ministry that the Lord had called before time. You stood and supported and worked with us. That's why this ministry is still here. I want to read you this. And we're going to close. Read it real quickly. Paul says these words about the Spirit of God. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Just as He chose us in Himself before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love, having predestined us to the adoptions of sons by Jesus Christ unto Himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the pra praise of the glory of the grace by which he made us accepted in his beloved. So in him. Oh, so awesome. Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. There's a plan of God. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times is this one. That he might gather together in all things in Christ. Both things in heaven and things that are in earth in him. In him also we have been. Excuse me. We have obtained an inheritance. Being predestined according to the purpose of him. Who works all things according to the counsel. And administration of his will. Glory to God. 2023. Hallelujah. Will never, 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 never end the way it started. This is the year. This is the time. Somewhere through the course of this year. What the world won't believe. What the church won't pay attention to. What most people hear you preach cannot grasp. Will begin. An outpouring of God that was predestined in us and for us before the ages to see in a manifestation and in the time that God had determined this, the time that we're living here today. I want to tell you this. Glory to God forevermore. Compared with the Lord, I am nothing. But oh my God, He is the glory and the lifter of my head. He will soon rescue this nation. He will take China and turn him down on his nose. China thinks that she's trying to get strong enough to challenge America, even militarily. Let me tell you, dumb idiots, this is devils in China. You're getting together an army of 200 million men that's going to march up the river Euphrates at the end of the tribulation. And you're going to join your forces whoever is left of you, to the, to, to the Antichrist by the time you get to Jerusalem to oppose and fight against Jesus when he comes from him. Here's the, here's the verse, Revelation 16, 12. You better keep building that military force because if you don't receive Jesus and many people in China are born again and many in China will come into this harvest. But there will still be enough in the end of seven years of tribulation for 200 million men from China. They're coming from China. This army. Let me tell you this right now. 
Let me tell you something right now. I speak by the presence, by the anointing of the Lord. Anybody who tries to touch this nation in a threatening way will drop dead. Anybody. Putin or whatever he is, he always expects good results. Putin. But you've got to put in something good to get something good out, Putin. Putin is a little idiot whose his mama never spanked and taught him manners when he's little. He's standing, you're standing on the verge of disaster. You try to lift but one finger against this nation, you will drop dead. I don't care who you say, president, he or she, or is male or female from China. I'm telling you something right now by the Spirit of God. You try and touch the United States of America, you'll drop dead. These people are ungodly and unaware of the things of God. You ought to come and talk to people who know God, who work for the Lord. You can come talk to me. I know. I walk with the Spirit. He's given me revelation. I can help you. I, I can save your life, and I can extend your life for you. Some of these leaders of nations need to come and sit down and talk to me. I'll tell you what to do to get ready for what God is bringing. You get your, your nation ready for prosperity, blessing, and the greatest harvest of ever. Any person... Any world leader try to lift a finger against this country. Because this is the nation that God set apart and called where all this will explode. And from here will go all over, over all the world. Back in 1980, even 81, Lord said to me, I chose America. I've I gone through that before. I chose America. And it, tell, it, it, it doesn't matter how bad it is in the White House. In a moment like this, God will turn it around. And that moment will come before this year is out. For an army shall stand up, a remnant of God, and the church will rise with fire and glory in their bones, and will be transformed into the fullness of the likeness, and the image and the measure of the Lord Jesus Christ, and will become the army of fire of Job chapter 2, and will launch as one, and will seize this country, and then will, because of the glory of God. That will be on us. Finally, there'll be a church unveiled, free, filled, flooded, full of glory, full of God, full of blessing, full of anointing, full of strength, full of power, full of wealth, full of everything. For the earth and the fullness thereof shall be ours, including the harvest of billions of souls around the world. That's what's on the agenda. That's what's coming next. And thank God for us. We're coming out of the desert after 40 years. Forever! Glory to God. Thank you for all, everyone that you do for this ministry. I pray some of you need to very seriously talk to the Lord about joining this ministry in heart and in finances. It's time, people. Get off your butt and move. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. Because if you don't, you jeopardize even your own destiny. Because being part of this ministry, your destiny will depend, some people's destiny will depend on it. Wake up, rise up, stand up, and rise up. Let's go. Lord, I give you all the praise and the glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Lord, forever. Forty years of your grace in my life and ministry. Now we come out of the desert. We're going to inherit your promised land. We'll give you praise and glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name.